We haven't done one of these in a minute. Yeah, I know. I have no idea what episode this is. It's a lot of episodes. Need a Scott the camera guy. What episode are we on? Uh, <laughs> no. Not Scott. No. <laughs> well, welcome. Is that a Ren record? That's a Ren record. Nice. I haven't shown you it? No. Oh, grab it. That's super cool. Watch out for Fry on the front there. Uh, the money will stay with it. Yeah, it's stamped on there. That was a gift from our lovely channel moderator, Ams. No way. Shh. Oh, in uh, these were limited to release only in the UK, and she's in the UK. Wow. So she went and uh, picked this up for me. Pull that bitch out. Oh, yeah, all the lyrics on the inside. How cool is that? Ooh, that's cool. Oh, man. Vinyl's so much cooler than pull, everything Pull else. one of them out. Wow. Oh. Double, double vinyl. Double vinyl set. You can show the people at home. Oh. I can't believe I haven't shown you that. That it is unreal cool. Seems like something I would show you. I love that. Isn't it neat? Super proud of that one. Wow. Yeah, super proud of that one. Have you ever looked into how they master for vinyl? Yeah, it's neat, eh? It's so cool. Yeah, what a trip. We should uh, we should talk about that one day. I'll learn about it some more. We have to this. All, all the sins. Oh, yeah. Seven deadly. And then... 350 of these? Yeah. Wow, that's super cool. What and, a good gift. Yeah. And then Man, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Prop that up a little bit. Yeah. Got some love. There you go. Hopefully it doesn't fall. There you go, Ren. Shout out to our renegades. Welcome to the episode, whatever episode this is. A number. <laughs> I'm Jess. I'm starting, Kevin. I was going to say, you should start introducing yourself. I'm Kevin. Yeah. And we are... Man, I got... I've been feeling really inspired the last little while, y'all. And I've been watching a ton of other podcasts to be yep. like, who can I, the competence thing, who mm -hmm. can I compete with to make myself better? Yep. But now I'm going to make sure that I don't just turn this into someone else's podcast. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Well, I don't think we can. <laughs> no, to be I honest know. With you. Yeah. Like, we'll be us always. It's yeah. just how it is. Like, we can be us in a direction, and that's probably about that's it. That's about it, yeah. yeah. Because, like, and shout out to, I can't even remember any of their names because of ADHD. Now that it's important, I can't remember any of their names. <laughs> that's how it works. But I'll try to shout them out if I can. But uh, there's some great ones out there, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It really made me realize that I think that being an audio nerd is getting cool again. I think being into things is cool. Be, yeah, yeah. Being passionate is cool, yeah. right? Yeah. I think for a long time we were told not to be passionate or it was yeah. like lame. Well, it was like something that made you unique and like uniqueness was like pariah -y. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you had to fit in with everybody. Like yeah. when we were growing up, everybody had to wear an American Eagle shirt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like, you were like ousted. I don't know why it was just the thing where like, Way before that was like Randy River. Did y'all have the cliques that told each other they were weren't allowed to wear a certain type of shirt? I'm sure they were out there. Nobody was telling me nothing. No, people left me alone too. <laughs> but uh, there was one girl I remember. I can't remember her name, or maybe I just won't say it. But she was wearing like a Hollister shirt, mm -hmm. and then another girl wore one, and she oh, was like, "Take that off! How She's dare like, you? You can't wear that." Well, Started a whole kerfuffle. Yeah, that does sound like a kerfuffle to me. Yeah. Um, so I actually planned out a show today and I also didn't grab my notes. So cool. I thought we could catch up from, uh, my Kelowna show though. Yeah. Cause you've heard how it sounds now. Yes. You've seen bits of the video too. Yes. Um, I haven't seen like the multicam stuff, but just like the standalone. I haven't either. I'm really excited I'm to so see that. I'm so excited for that. Yep. Man, shout out to uh, two, six films. They kill it every okay, time. Isn't it weird that these, these kids, cause they're still kids. Yep. They have, they're releasing an EP and will probably have a decent live dvd yeah like, oh yeah before they've been <laughs> and and like a record distribution deal like yeah. how is that happening oh man? dude i keep telling uh, the one mom that i talk to most of the time i'm like when this becomes self-sufficient and the band's like on their own we're all writing a book oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it actually every, makes no sense every single one of us man yeah it makes no sense but it also makes sense like, oh like when you hear the band man like this is what i said like they they thank our community and they're very vocal about our community giving them the confidence to start. Mm. But I, I'm like, just end it there though. Like, don't give me any more props because y'all are undeniable. Yeah, like, yeah. it, it, it would have taken anyone to start that spark. I do, I do feel proud of like the trust that I have with my community that they were willing to give mm -hmm. to like a band that none of us had ever met before. Yeah. Um, and that's got to reflect on me a little bit. So I will take props there. But mm -hmm. like, I, I honestly think that if anyone gave them the chance, man, like anyone would have seen it, mm -hmm. you know? Well, yes and no. Like we've seen lots of good bands come and go. Yeah. That's you know fair. what I mean? Like yeah. you, you did help them, um, feel confident enough to put themselves out there. And that's like bigger than most people understand. So I actually have two stories specifically from my Kelowna trip that I think you'll vibe with. Mm -hmm. So the first one 
Apparently, I was not the first person to react to Freeze the Fall. Hmm. There was someone else. And apparently, that person was a little harsh on them. Oh, really? To the point where when I posted mine, the family didn't want to watch it. Oh, really? Yeah. But, like, imagine it's your kid. Yeah. Well, someone, yeah. like, on the internet trashing your kid. I have no idea. I don't know what video it was. Yeah, I don't yeah. know who it was. But um, so when I watched it and like, man, like they're young, I think they were 14, 14 and 15 in it. Mm -hmm. It's like shot from the bar that they played in. It's just like they're off the thing mix. Mm -hmm. But my tolerance for that is probably like yours. It's probably higher than most people's because mm -hmm. well, we in, understand. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah. A hundred times. And like we see that, like if you're here now, that means you are here at this point. That means you're here at this point. So like if you see somebody at a, a place that they're performing at a very young age, better than most people that are double their age. Yeah. So it's like, it might not be pro yet, but if they're this young and they have the, uh, the, uh, the passion to become that good at that age, yeah. well then they have the passion to continue to progress. And then they're going to be at X when they're that old. Yeah. Like, what they're doing right now will pale in comparison to what they do in three years time. Oh, bro. which will pale in comparison to what they do in seven years time. Like, and what's wild is like they're in this. Like I got to keep some stuff on lock, <laughs> but they're in the studio right now, mm -hmm. and the band included and the parents. They're like, yo, like nothing. There's nothing against that first EP. They're like, but our writing now is so much better. Mm -hmm. Like, and when the band is saying it, that's when like you know like things have changed. You oh know yeah. What I mean? Well, they've been through the. Like when you do that first EP, you went you it's rough to do your first record. Yeah. Like rough. People don't understand because like S singing for the first time in f in an intimate environment with like a producer and maybe two mm -hmm. three other people with headphones on where you can actually hear yourself. I like I remember the moment the first time that happened to me mm -hmm. and I went green. Yeah, I went yeah. pale, bro. I had to go for a walk. I was yeah. like 15 or something too but not to mention like think about this like when you're a kid and you're growing up and you're playing in front of people you're usually playing in front of people that will most likely be encouraging mm -hmm. right it's like everything you do is positive you're doing great and then you go into a studio and there's going to be someone there that's not going to be harsh about it but they're going to say no we need a better take yeah you know what i mean no we need to do that again that wasn't quite right yeah. that ability to deal with that type of almost rejection but not really it's just that cr critique yeah, yeah. The, cr the 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 coaching part yeah. of it that's hard. See, and that's like um, uh, the bass player's dad, Craig, he called me and he's like, it's amazing seeing they, they've got like a new process when it comes to pre-production and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so they're sitting there and Jordan's in the room with um, the drummer and uh, he's just telling him like, hey, man, like do this section again. I just want more. Mm -hmm. And he's like not telling him how to play. He's yeah, like, yeah. just give me more. Yep. And he's like, it, you can decide what that is. Are you hitting hard? Are you changing the fill? Or like whatever. He's mm -hmm. like, just th this section here, we're going to go over and over and over until I get what I want. Yeah, yeah. And like Craig was telling me, man, he's like the magic coming out of the room. Well, yeah, because what like, and this is, that's like the Rick Rubin-y vibe, in mm -hmm. my opinion, where it's like, whatever you are, give me more of it. Yeah. Like be more Where's yourself in shirt? this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I love that. Yeah. I love that idea of like, okay, you, like I'm not going to tell you what to do because I'm not you. Yeah. But whatever you're doing, just give it to me. It's bigger larger than life or yeah. whatever it is that needs to happen there and that i it's cool that's a cool vibe and yeah so a good result so back to the thing that i thought you would like they watched my video and one thing that i'm really careful with is i try to say things in a way that i would want it said to me yeah so i was thinking to myself in that moment i was like you know these teenagers are probably going to hear this mm -hmm. if i was a teenager how would i want someone to say this to me mm. and that's it yeah and i thought it was good man i thought they killed it i think i think in the either the first video I reacted to or maybe a different one I watched, I think they kind of like fell off a touch and then they like kind of lock eyes and they get right back into it. Mm -hmm. This is like like <laughs> you guys are good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you Honestly. Know? So yeah, it's awareness. Yeah. Yep. But and it's funny if I could talk a little bit of shit, going back to like the first reaction that apparently happened because I I personally can't confirm it, and some of the other opinions that are out there, and then all the things that have happened, mm -hmm. like from affirmations getting distribution deal the media deal and everything it's just like feels good <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i mean i don't know there's like a, a weird thing to try and be people in the reacting space it, it tends to usually, usually be down two lanes of just like um the harshness side of things where it's like i want to react and um be salacious. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, cause I want to 
have some sort of fire from the thing that I just put out. Yeah. Or it's people that are enjoying. Yeah. And I've like the enjoyment part and like taking in what is, I think is like the more cool part of reacting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to go watch something that I'm going to go hate on. I yeah. just don't. No, I, like, I, I, I don't, don't want to spend my energy that way. Yeah. I don't I, like the, I don't like the energy of it. Energy conservation is a real thing, man. Yeah. And like I'd rather, I even noticed that like when I get stuck in like world news and I just try to be aware cause I know that like a person should pay a little bit of attention, but if that's the main majority of the like content I'm getting outside of work, yeah. my whole mood is different. Oh yeah, yeah. And then like, if I get myself out of that and start listening to like positive things or music again, it's like, it's, I'm a different person. Yep. Well, but, if you work, if you listen to the news, everything's bad all the time. Yeah. It just is what it is. Yeah. And like, I don't know. I'm with you. I've just realized that that's not the the place I want to put my focus. Yep. So. But um, to connect that whole point there. So um, I posted my reaction and the family didn't really want to watch it. Someone did watch it. I don't know who. And they like called everyone else and they're like, yo, like you got to watch this. And they were like, mm, I don't, I don't think I want to. Yeah. And whoever the first person was like, no, like this one you got to watch. Right. And they, they reached out to me right away. They mailed me a shirt and like some business yeah, cards that. and a few things. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other one that I liked Craig's dad, like Craig is a dad. And mm-hmm. then, so his dad, um, has like an eight, uh, I think 10 acres. I don't want to get too far into it, but 10 acres, a couple of different like orchards and stuff, garden and all the things. He's been a saxophone player his whole life. Cool. I want to say. And he ran like a business, a really like a construction business for a long time. So he came out to Revelry and he had heard of our story and like how I met the band and all this stuff. And then he heard that I was doing sound for the band and then he saw me perform with the band. And I thought this is the best compliment of the whole entire trip. He said, I'd like to meet him. Hmm. And I just went, nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That was just like the head nod that I wanted. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it was like, I got seven acres. It's not mine. I rent. But I'm on seven acres. I got my little vegetable garden going yeah. on. I'm trying to give back how I can. I'm trying to start my little business. You're going to learn saxophone. Yeah. And it's like, if real recognizes real, then that that's someone I want to recognize yep. me, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I met so many beautiful pa- like parents, family, grandparents, friends, man. Shout out to everyone that was at the show. Um <laughs> But yeah, those were two of my favorites that I thought you would like. That's great. Yep. Yep. The head nod thing, man. That's huge. Isn't that neat though? Yep. Yep. And I was just like, you know, especially from a saxophone player. Oh yeah. Because you know how you you might be like me in this, how you look at guitar players and you're like, yeah, you're a guitar player. (laughs) (laughs) Saxophone players, it's like, yeah, yeah. Like my bad. (laughs) Well, I remember when I was when I was uh, staying with Brad Sample when we were in Nashville. And he was saying that he got it's like some badass guitar teacher when he was first coming up in the game down there. And the first thing he made him do was learn saxophone solos on guitar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You told it's me just about like, this. these guys are so much better than we are. <laughs> so much better, yeah. <laughs> it's, just like, it's just like, no, no, they, they, they know what they're doing a lot better. It's way more lyrical. It's way just yeah. better. Yeah. But like in that Bill Murray band, the saxophone is... Just it just hits so hard. Oh, dude. It's oh, yeah. ridiculous. You know what's funny is I've been watching videos of them live and it's mostly just like cam footage or like mm-hmm. stage mixes and stuff. They turned um, Blindsided into a duet with her. Yeah, yeah, She yeah. sings the second verse in the outro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Well, like when you listen to those tracks, like they've got both of those singers in there real low. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I just low. didn't notice it until I saw it. Yeah. And then I, now it's all I can it's hear. Like, it's like this like um, real textural element. Yeah. Even, even the, the lower male vocal is like really muffled. Yeah. It's just kind of like low mid It's like support. echoey almost. Yeah. yeah. It's really... And there's lots of saxophone in the mix too. Same thing. Yeah, it's just like yeah. ducked. It's or just something. way, yeah. way out of... And I also didn't realize that I don't know if there is a bass. Um, I think it's... There's a big thing going on in production right now where it's a certain baritone guitar that everyone's playing. Well, so what I saw... I watched this guitar playthrough of... I can't... I think it was... Uh, about a cashew or whatever. But the, the dude is playing the bass line on a strat second pickup octave down. Huh. And like that's the guitar part. I mean, to be fair, you and I We did that. Did that. Yeah. I know. That's where I was like, oh, maybe we're not See how I keep telling you that we should keep doing things? Yeah, maybe we're, maybe we're just right. <laughs> I'm telling you. Like, it's know. just a weird thing. It's a weird pill to swallow from yeah. time to time. Because like I stare at this freeze the fall thing and I just go, huh. huh. <laughs> I could have we said right. no. <laughs> I could have like, you know, like done something else. Stupid then I was like, no, I, I got a good feeling about this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> These meddling kids. Yeah. Just kidding. I love you all. You all know that. You yeah. all know that. 
But yeah, no, it's just one of those things where it's like, huh. Every once in a while, it's just like, yeah, huh, maybe we, maybe we're, maybe a we're not bit. so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Who'd have thought? <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Speaking of dumb, that digital console I mixed on. Yeah. Alan Heath Avantis. I'm not, it's not dumb at all. It was really, really, really cool. Shout out to Danielle and her whole team at Revelry 2. Um, she made that console her bitch. I pretended to push some stuff around on it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool, man. It was, I, um, I honestly, I don't know if someone like said, hey, can you come and do sound? And I had to get it in front of one of those and I've never seen one before. I don't know. You know. I don't what? know if I could do it. Everyone's got their like. Like I remember working with Sweet, right, the Ballroom Blitz man, mm-hmm. and we're doing sound check, and the sound guy is furious. He's like, "Bro, the left side of the PA is not working." And I walk up to his console, and he's just got the fader off. So I just <laughs> turn the fader up, and he's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." Yeah. And I'm like, "Bro, like it happens." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of consoles, it's just one, or yeah. they're like they're matched together, they're stuck together. So when you move one, they both move. Mm-hmm. Analog board, it had two separate ones. Anyway, so I was like, yeah. "I got you," right? So here's me sound checking. <laughs> already feeling like I'm stepping on toes and they were cool with it. They're like sound guys come in here all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But it was just like my first gig back in a long time. And I always feel like I'm stepping on people's feet going into these rooms. So I'm sound checking and everything's going good. I got like, they had this great plugin pack in there. So I had like 1176s that DBX 160s, the like clones. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, it's like, I can see the compressor just ripping, but it's not really doing what I want it to do. In. <laughs> I'm like, yo, what's the difference between this one and this one? This one's lit up. This, this one's not. not. Yeah, She's like, oh, it's turned off. Hits it. I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, flick it on. And then I'm it. like sitting here like, oh, yeah, now I'm going to mix this whole show. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. That's, uh, isn't that just like a horrible feeling? Horrible. Like, yeah. Uh, it's just the worst. But so, that's, where, that's where like the technology is cool, but it's like make it the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like there's got to be some sort of like, oh, you know how you've worked on all these other consoles? Well, it's pretty much the same. There kind of is. My understanding is that there's like three, four languages. And once you sort them all out, you can just kind of get through them all. Yeah. But like, to be fair, if I hadn't been doing all this stuff in Cubase lately, I would have been useless on that console. Oh, I get you. Absolutely yeah, yeah. useless. Because yeah, like little things that I took for granted, like say dialing up an aux send to get more reverb on w- or delay on one word. Mm-hmm. Would, I would have never figured out how to do that on the yeah, digital yeah. thing. But then I realized that you have to go to the send spot, keep it down. Mm-hmm. And when she says the word, you pull it up, mm-hmm. says the word, pull it back down, go back to your mix screen. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it was rock and roll, man. I got lots of compliments on it. Yeah. I don't so doubt it. I got hired again, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, the Vantis console was really cool, man. The preamp sounded really good. Give me, obviously it's not going to sound like an SSL and mm-hmm. it was through a really nice, I think I have Martin or a Meyer PA system. Mm-hmm. Um, she told me it looks like a line array, but it doesn't sound like a line array. She's like, don't mix it like a line array. So. Sounds like boxes. Yeah. Yeah. It sounded good though. They had nice. center fills, subs on aux, which is, might be my new favorite thing. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yep. The two touch screen thing was wild though, because like you'd click something and you'd be staring at the one screen and be like, where is it? You like look over like, oh shit. <laughs> it's clever though. Yeah. It's pretty clever in terms of like, um, workflow. Yeah. I'm guessing you can do, like, once you know that thing inside and out, I'm guessing you can pull up a mix real fast. Oh, yeah, because, um, like, we had, like, the stage box, like, overheads were with the hi-hats, and I was like, yo, can you move those to the back of the kit? And she was like, yep. And then there they are. Just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Changes the name of them and everything, yeah, right? Yeah. And what was wild, too, is, like, they printed everything into a logic session. <coughs> yep. And so since they're organized, I would have just gone, like, vocal one, vocal two, vocal three. And, no, I had, like, Aria, names, yeah. Quinn, Jonah, and then it prints to the stems, and it says their names, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's clever. Yeah, man. It was a really cool rig, man. Like, shout out to Reverie for trying to keep, like, their thing was they want breakout bands and bands that are on their way down, mm. which I thought is a great niche to stick to, right? Yep. No, oh, I think that's really clever. Yep. I mean, I don't understand what makes it so that, like, live music can be, like, consumed in a town. Like, why, why does Revelry work? Do you know what? I have a few thoughts on that. One of them, bro, I had that ripping in that room mm-hmm. not one noise complaint yeah of course not Not one person complained i still still am of the mindset that a nice mix loud should not hurt oh and that's exactly it like you know i'm looking for bite but i'm not looking to tire your ears out yep. right and there's all kinds of tricks to that like 4k will wear your ears out mm-hmm. but you need 4k to make a guitar bite yep. so i had the second guitar because i doubled it of course Naturally. i had that one more 4k heavy and just played it back a little bit and then mm-hmm. when it was guitar solo time or clean channel time to bring it in. Mm-hmm. Now it's bitey, it's in your face, but it's not going to tire you out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, did all kinds of stuff like that. And to be fair, I was turning it down most of the night. Yeah. Like once we were getting to levels and gain staging things, like once the band's playing yep. and really rocking, um, turning it 
turning it down most of the night, which was cool. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like good sound, A, like it's super rare. <laughs> it's just because bars don't care. Yeah, that's the thing. Bars don't care to make a room sound good. Oh, yeah, bro. Then, they spent money on this place. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Yeah. But like, again, it's like, okay, so good sound, fair. Good bands. Yep. Um, how was the service? Uh, as far as I needed service, it was dope. Um, they had like a very limited menu, but it was like good food. Mm. Um, it was just like appetizers and quick mac and cheese and yep. stuff. Um, drinks were quick. There's a bar at the back, kind of like how the old average Joe's side used to be. Mm. Yep. Um, not that y'all know, but basically you have a stage on one side and then a long bar or a long space and then the bar at the back. So, yep. um, washrooms, merch area up front, mm. the, all the toilets flooded. Like we're Hilarious. supposed to go on at eight and at like seven fifty eight, it's just like water everywhere, uh. pouring out the back of the building pouring out the front it was just water yeah Ugh. yeah gross <laughs> but yeah man it was pretty cool nice yeah i just wish that more cities could have like venues that actually work i wish that there was more places that were like <coughs> small show friendly or middle size show friendly yeah yeah, yeah. a mid show like yeah. three to eight hundred people yep you know what i mean where it's just like oh yeah this room uh you would call it like uh, cozy maybe or like yeah. intimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. intimate. You know what I mean? like, it's like the step up from theater intimate to where you can still have like a bit of a floor. Yeah, yeah. The kids had their first um, a mosh, nice mosh pit. One I believe was a principal of theirs. One, the other one was like a science teacher. Awesome moshing with a bunch of kids. I th- thought that was great. That's dope. Yeah, wow, that's really cool. Yeah, that's a good trip. That's yeah, a man, darn good trip. Yeah, hanging out in Jordan's studio is really cool too. You'd like that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, I love studios always. Yeah, I also like studios because like. If you go in there and you see the gear and you see the setup, you know exactly what they do. Yeah. Like, you know exactly what they are, what the what the thing is, how they're going to approach stuff. Yep. And like, yeah, I, that was like when we were looking for mixing rooms, um, when we were doing the record, it was like when you go and just meet up with these people in their spots, it was that exact same thing. Yep. It's like, oh, I see what you do here already. Yep. Like, I get exactly and what this is. What's neat is like, I like seeing the personality in it. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like you know he's got like some beers and a little table with like some chips on there. Probably mm-hmm. haven't been stocked in a while since the last party. Yep. And then they've got like an Xbox while the cables hanging out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like the studio is immaculate and yeah. it's beautiful and everything's within reach yeah. and it's all the stuff that matters. Right? The rest of it's like how do I kill time yeah. when I'm just like waiting and waiting and waiting. Yeah. Um. But what was really cool, man, was like I went in that room and I just gave like a good like one of these and I was like, oh, that sounded like the freeze the fall snare drum. Mm-hmm. Like that's just what that room sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's not any real tricks or magic to it. It's just rock and roll. Having a good drum room is 28 foot ceiling. The glass is only up top. So it's like this nice brittle <coughs> kind of top end. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, man. It was really cool. Nice. The uh, music store out there too was pretty dope. About the same size as ours in town. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe like one of the Calgary locations, but mm-hmm. didn't have a uh, L&M though. No, it's yeah. not. No. Yeah. Um, I was looking for, you know, the Diodario De- straps, the belt mm-hmm. buckle clip ones. Yep. Um, I couldn't find the strap part of mine. And I have a whole other rig. I was just going to rob it from that. I couldn't find it. So I went there, looked for one. They didn't have one. The new ones, they screw all together or something funky. Mm-hmm. So that's actually got zip ties on it. <laughs> the strap that I, I played that. with Freeze the Fall. Yeah. Yep. And that was, so once I picked the size, it was a little bit high for my liking. Like, yeah. But I couldn't go a back. Proggy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a little. Actually, you know what, though? I overshot playing a bunch of chords because of that. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, I had no idea where my hands were because they were just just a little high, like yeah. one. Oh, it's amazing how much that changes it. Yeah, probably made my playing cleaner technically, but it'll do that. Yeah. But you just don't feel cool. No, you know what I mean. It definitely doesn't feel cool. I, I used to mess around with that quite a bit because, like, I, I I don't know. Like, if you start worrying about how you play, then all of a sudden that that strap just keeps creeping up. Yeah, and then it's like. But do I look cool? Then all of a sudden cool? you're playing like this. But do I look cool? Yeah. And then it just comes back down. Do you think that like when you're working away at your ego, but you got to be proud of yourself a little bit, do you think you like get to a step and you backslide a little bit just to like check in? And then you like keep working away from your ego and then you like got to check in again. It's like us saying like, like, oh, maybe we are right every once in a while. <laughs> well, I think, okay. And then you got to go back to being humble. Well, I think ego is like, our, it's just our self-perception, right? Yeah. And... I don't think we ever devolve or to completely dissolve ego because that's part of our survival. But I do think that we can look at our ego through health or unhealth. Mm -hmm. And it's like when everybody talks about like demolishing their ego, they're never talking about the good things. No, they're always talking about the bad parts. So it's like, okay, I have an ego, 
but I don't want it to hurt others yeah, or hurt me in the process. So it's like, I'm going to rebuild my ego accurately. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's, so, that's that, uh, like back to Rick Rubin, like when he talks about himself, he talks about himself with pure confidence mm-hmm. because he is a hundred percent confidence in his taste. Yeah. That was that, like that comment was like, Oh, okay. You just know you. Yeah. And that's an ego thing, technically. So, right? but well, it's not going to hurt others. So, what would it take to get Kevin to that place? Ooh, probably. Sorry to shift that. So, seriously. no, no, it's fine. Um, I'm working on it. Okay. I'm trying to get because like, think about all the evidence that you've ever had when it comes to music. Mm-hmm. It's all been that you should be doing this full time. <laughs> yeah. One hundred percent of it. No, there is no but. There I, is no but. How often do you get hit up for mixed references? A bit. Like a year ago, every time you came over here, you were getting shown mixes. Yeah. And groups have hired you. Yeah. Now we're working with a signed artist. Well, and like... Shouldn't I talk too much about that because it's more of a like convenience thing, but... <laughs> I know that I like what I like. Okay. You know what I mean? Do you think that Rick Rubin likes what he likes or do you think that he knows that other people likes what he does? He says that he does it for him. So... And I, I, I'm of the same mind, but doing things for myself is a very sticky wicket for me, mm, right? Okay. Like, I, that's that's my hold up. Like, do I know that I can execute something? Yes. I don't feel unconfident in that. Mm-hmm. I feel like I can deliver something that I would be like, I like this. Mm-hmm. I know that I can do that. But I have a hard time allowing myself to do that for me. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I feel you. I, I <laughs> have a hard time with the idea of doing that without it being for someone else, right? Mm-hmm. Like even in, even in these things, it's like, I I won't say, hey man, can I mix that? I want to. But if you say, hey man, can you help me with this mix? I'll go, yeah. Yeah. Because now all of a sudden, the thing that I want to do has been given license to happen through you, mm-hmm. right? Interesting. But like, I won't ever say to you like, hey man, can I mix that? I won't. Interesting. Uh, or at least I have not okay. previously. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay, I got because, you. Because like, for me, it's like I need a cosigner. Yeah. That's that's what I've lived in. So like, you know, like writing songs, doing the Feo thing, um, tattooing, like a lot of what I've done in life, I got a cosigner for. Mm-hmm. Someone said, hey, you should do this. And I go, yes, yes. Uh, now I can do the thing I want to do mm-hmm. <laughs> rather than just being honest about the fact that, hey, I want to do this. Yeah. And that's the thing that I have difficulty with. Interesting. And that's the part of like me having a voice to pursue that for what I want to do because like I view that as selfish somehow if you ask me for help I'm helping you of course if I ask you for to just do this thing well I'm not helping you I'm helping me are you though yeah like I could be helping others in in the way that I had previously perceived myself yes I don't perceive myself that way but I have years of practicing never doing that sure okay and you know, the, um, that idea of like, it can help multiple people, but me being genuine about the fact that I want it is really hard for me. Interesting. It's really, it's just, that's the thing that I struggle with in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. It's just like being honest about the fact that I have a desire in that. Mm-hmm. It's like, I need someone else to tell me it's okay. It's, it's really interesting. It's such an like interesting perspective. Cause like I obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but I have so many <laughs> similar like alignments with that two different like placements mm-hmm. it's just like everything you said i could be like oh yeah man like i 100 percent relate that to myself it just it i guess it bears its face in other ways mm-hmm. which is kind of interesting i think we all have our own expressions of difficulty with self-value in some area not all of us have it in the same way mm-hmm. but you know unless you're in a place of like um either like full peace with yourself or you know, sociopath, sociopath or something where you just literally don't care about others. Um, I think there's areas of our lives that we don't feel fully secure in Mm -hmm. and it expresses it in those areas. Not everybody's going to have that for what they want to do for a job or for fun or whatever, but they may have it for finances. They may have it for, um, food. They may have it for relationships. They might have it for who knows, but everybody's got usually something that they're like, uh, I, I don't know how to be, fully me in this area Mm -hmm. and um like i like a lot of aspects of me now you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i like that 
I like me, but the practice of not speaking out for these things and like being, having that allowance from, from myself is something that I'm working through currently. Interesting. No, that's really interesting. I hope that you can find a result for that. Yeah. I, I, I think it's doing it. Yeah. You know, yeah. as much as it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. I think the practice of doing it and having it be okay. Mm-hmm. Like just teaching my body that like, if I say like, Hey man, can I mix that? And you go, yeah. And then we do it. Yeah. And that be okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that in itself is just like your body thinks it won't be okay. So you do it. And then, so you do it anyway. And then it's all right. So like I have more experience on either like missing out or saying no to something and just knowing that I'm going to miss out that like, I don't ask to be a part of things or like to try to do things. So even like asking to mix freeze the fall was like felt alien to me. Mm. Like not even this stuff because that's new, but like the live show Mm -hmm. that felt like so out of place for me because I was like, I would, I would feel better or like I'm used to not asking and just not getting it or even asking and not getting it. Mm. Like, cause I mixed, um, what was your country band? The first one it was like Tenny all in the freaking band. And you opened at average shows a couple of times. Oh, um, doesn't matter. I remember um, that was going by justice Bradshaw. That time. was it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, um, y'all brought me out to mix and buddy snubbed me. He didn't let yeah, me mix. Yeah. yeah. And Who then, was that? It was typical douchebag. Oh yeah. 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 Not, oh, I'm right. Yeah, that whole yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. But like, so, and that was just, that came down to an ego thing. So yeah. for me, it was just like, if I ask, even if they say yes, like y'all said yes and told me yes, it's like, it won't work out anyway. So I just won't ask. Hmm. And I'm so, going to be d- disappointed anyway. So I might as well not even. Yeah. Or I'm going to be looked at a certain way. So I just won't. But that's, that's that thing that I was telling you about where it's like, you can see that that's a possibility mm-hmm. and therefore you assume because you just felt it. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Like when you see it as like, oh, I'll be snubbed. Then you feel the feeling of snubbed even though nothing's happened yet. Yeah. You've not even asked the question, but now all of a sudden you've experienced the pain of being snubbed. Yeah. And it's like, well, yeah, of course you wouldn't ask because that hurts. That mm-hmm. shit hurts. Especially if you've actually had it in real life. Yeah. Then every time you think on a situation where that might happen, well, you just get are getting that shit repeated yeah. over and over again. Well, it's like I'd rather at that point, I'd rather just miss out or have that feeling of missing out than get let down or burned or mm-hmm. anything, right? So. But this is where like, for me, when I think about with people, like for me, okay, I've got this situation or you've got this situation, but it's like, if I can understand that this is my behavior, this is what I do, and this is why I've done it, then when it's happening, hopefully I can be aware in the situation and choose to go away from that You got to intervene in the process, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or intentionally just set up. So like, okay, like if I want to do these things, that means I have to, even if it's not an opportunity that's present right now, I have to intentionally set aside some time to make an opportunity to practice this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like, um, if I don't practice the behavior, then I won't ever incorporate it when it's game time. Absolutely not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely like, not. It's just, it you won't per- happen. You perform like you practice, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, man, it's tough. I'm pretty practiced at just trying to avoid things, especially things that have hurt before. Um, but I'm using this and I'm trying to use the momentum of like all the affirmations around us to be like, no, like maybe I, to an extent, y'all, but maybe I'm that guy, you know? I think I, I think someone needs a little bit of that to keep pushing on. Because if you just sit there and you keep doing things, you keep second guessing yourself, like what's that going to do for you? So, well, I mean, you get nowhere. Yeah, that's what just, I'm saying. Yeah, you just spin tires. Yeah. Which is what I've been doing for a long time. Yeah. Just been in tires. You got to get out of it, bro. You deserve to get out of it. I I agree. You know what I conceptually. heard? Conceptually. You know what I heard the other day that really fucked me up? Yeah. It's talking about how if you're a creative, it says you fail all the time because you don't put infrastructure in place. Mm-hmm. And that it was like sense. everything you need to do needs to go to getting that infrastructure in place. Mm-hmm. And once it's in place, you'll be just fine. Barry's and I just thought back. Bro. Various to entry. Yeah, and I just thought back, like even my YouTube channel, mm-hmm. I'm after hearing that, I've pushed away from it a little bit because it's like I should have a better system for tracking requests. I should have a better system for tracking videos I've done. Mm-hmm. I should have better methods of X, Y, and Z, but I haven't implemented those as actual strategies or things with infrastructure. Mm-hmm. So they're just always like, what's at the top of my head? So and I'm fighting myself in that. There's a there was an interesting little like um helping thing from that talk on this from the psychiatrist that I listen to mm-hmm. about overthinking and not making decisions. And he had this interesting little like hack that sometimes works for people. And I think maybe in your situation, he said that on average, the first thought you have in the morning will happen. Interesting. So if it's like, 
um, a negative behavior, I want to sleep in. Oh no, but I should get up and go to the gym. You're sleeping in. Yeah. Interesting. So mine is always, God damn it. Why am I awake right now? <laughs> well, yours is because of yelling coyotes or something. But like so 1 a.m. those fuckers. Say say you had something like on your phone or like a piece of paper or something that's like the first element that you see that has that behavior that you want to produce in your day. Yeah. So say it's like infrastructure. Yeah. Okay. So it's like you could get into that mindset of like, oh, I want to stay in bed but I got to make work on my infrastructure of my podcast and Oh, I won't do it now yeah. because your first thought was that you don't want to. Yeah. Right. But if you get up and you go, okay, today I want to work on this infrastructure, but I'd really like to stay in bed. doesn't matter. Your first thought is usually yeah. what happens. Or even if you stay in bed, maybe that thought's still in mind so that when you get up, cause like I started doing something a long time ago where Bef- like right before you go to bed, the last thing you do is you write down like five, six things next you want to do the next day. Same principle. I think. And even if you don't do those, you wake up with that fire. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And like, I might wake up and have totally different plans, especially because nobody respects my schedule around here. <laughs> 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 and, uh, so it's like all of a sudden I'm up, I'm ready, but it's good because I'm productive. Yeah. 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 And, uh, if I don't have that, if I don't plan, then I'm just groggy and I'm on my phone at mm-hmm. five and just like doing this till no more, I guess this way. I'm not on Tinder or any of those things going this way. <laughs> <laughs> but like, think about it that way. Like, okay, well, if, you're, if your intention is, oh, why am I awake right now? Well, you're immediately like not wanting to engage in your day. Yep. Right? Like my problem is, is I don't value myself above the other things that bear weight in my day. So like when I go, oh, I should go sit down and I should work on my infrastructure. Then I go, oh, but this, 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 this take precedence over that. So and then I don't do anything. Well, because you have low self-esteem. <laughs> I don't think it's as much low self-esteem. <coughs> I don't think y'all understand how much I cover up. That's the one thing I've been noticing lately is like the Instagram life is real. I just want to yeah, put that I out know. there. I don't got the riches, none of that stuff. I don't pretend to. But the like how people only see your happy moments and then other things. I'm like, I've mastered that right now. Mm. Totally unintentionally. Okay. Totally unintentionally. So let me challenge you a little bit. Yeah. Bring it. Okay. So you said low self esteem. Yeah. Low self value. Yeah. Let's use that word. Um, what do you do when you value something? What do I do when I value something? Yes. I try to share it with everybody. Okay. Explain. Well, it, I love Freeze the Fall. I love everything they're doing. What if no one's around? I start making phone calls. No, no, no. Leave other people about it. What do you experience when you value something? When I value something? What do you do? Um, you value your garden. Yeah, I give it like repetitive attention. Okay, yep. great. So do you think that the value comes first and the attention comes second? Or do you think the attention builds the value? I don't know. And I see, like, because in my head I answered both, and both of them I could rebuttal. Sure, whatever. But it would make more sense to me if, like, the value was consistent. Because today it's the garden, tomorrow it's the desk, the next day it's the podcast. Like, it's really, it jumps around. No, no, we're talking about one one thing right now. Your garden. My garden. You value it. Yes. Right? Yes. Did you value it before you started it? Yes. Are you sure? Because you didn't start it. My garden? Like, are we talking like in time before I started yes. it? Because I've been trying to have a garden since I was 18 years old. Sure. Every house I've lived in, I've in one form or another tried when to have a garden. When did you start valuing this garden? Uh, When I got YouTube broke. <laughs> Instead of YouTube rich, I'm going to start saying YouTube broke. No, no. Be honest here. I am being honest. Did you Did you start valuing it when you hadn't done it? When I hadn't done it. Um. Okay. Because when it was a dream in your head. I, I value that though. I no, value no, no, no. the dream though. No, the garden didn't exist. I know. There was no value yet. In Says the physical who? garden. Because. So if your garden came and got destroyed right now. Yeah. That would be heartbreaking, right? Sure. Because you value it. Yeah. If you had a hypothetical garden in your head. So. That like, has no weight on you. If bef- like when I moved into this place before I planted my garden, if I had to move out of this place, mm-hmm. you're talking about that situation or a tornado hits and tor- tears up your, all your work you've done. That ha- not that tornado, but that happened twice last year. Yeah. It's horrible, right? Just got to keep going, bro. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know. Like that's, you're, you're trying to avoid it in this one. No, I'm not. I think that, I'm being honest. I think that 
my theory, what I'm trying to drive towards. Because, because hold, hold tight for a second. Yeah. Because me thinking and daydreaming about having the garden pulled me out of another depressed state that yes. I was in. And, escape, and it got sure. me back into learning, research, and being excited about things. And I actually read the first like physical book that I've read since high school mm-hmm. before I had my garden. But that's, you valued the idea of your garden. Yeah. I'm talking the physical existence of your garden. Oh, okay. Then, right? then so yeah, like, no. It's like if you're going to have a kid, right? Yeah. Like, okay, I can value the idea of a child and what that will mean to me at some point. But I can't day. value but the child till it's you're not physically valuing the thing that you have to take care of, okay. right? That's them saying the difference is. Okay. Our imagination, and I'm saying this to you and hearing it for myself from from what I'm realizing, okay? So I'm I'm taking my own medicine as I say this. But the valuing comes from the creation. Mm -hmm. When you invest in something, that builds value. Everybody thinks that they need to have value innately in themselves when they don't do anything for themselves. See, and that's that's an interesting thing because like a direct example is like me taking time out of my evening to go work on a mix or a podcast. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm taking time out of my life or Danielle's time or whatever. I I feel like I'm taking away from Danielle and doing something for myself where... If I did the thing for myself to the point where I was like, if I focused on it, I did a good job, I was proud of it. Now I made that time valuable enough that Danielle, because she's my partner, would understand that I took that time away. And in that, you're also valuing myself. Danielle. Danielle. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Right? Yeah. And that that's, but that's because you've done the thing. That's the thing. It all comes down to com- doing the thing, right? Well, I don't think it all comes down to it, but a lot of the reason that we think that we don't do the thing is because we don't have this thing first. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a little backwards. Yeah, that it's makes sense. It's one of those like, you know, how do That's you value... That's what then why instead of why then what. Yeah, like I, how do you, how do you value time. a healthy body if you don't have one? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, but if you gain health and you're like, man, I love this. I'm going to do my best to secure this. It means something to you. It has value, innate value. And yeah. I'm not talking about the innate, like the personhood part. I'm mm-hmm. talking about what we do for ourselves. Mm-hmm. The actions that we do to care for ourselves is the thing that I'm talking about in terms of that. That type of thing. And I think a lot of people think that the the thing that needs to click first is that um, feeling like I'm worth doing these things for. And I think a lot of that understanding the worth is from the doing. Huh. And it's like... That makes sense. Just because then you have it, right? Yeah. Then you have it. You can have value for something that you have. If, you, if it's just a concept, you have value for the concept, but you haven't brought it into existence yet, right? And I, I think that like if you want to build the self-value the actions of what you would do. So it's like, okay, I don't have a garden yet. What do I need to do to get a garden? Okay, I I'm going to do all those things to get a garden. Take action is the overarching one, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because the sooner I start the garden, I will have the garden, yeah. and then I can value the garden. Yeah. But again, I have nothing yet. So if I build the thing, I will be able to value it. Yeah. And like the the self-perception part of that, like having a healthy relationship with your own mind that isn't like I get self-value and then I start being nice to myself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's I start being nice to myself so I gain the self-value. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, I see. And I think like, because for me, I was expecting for myself to just have some sort of like change in observance of myself. But I find that the better I do with the behaviors, the more I gain that feeling of I actually matter to me, yeah. right? Like Which the things that sense. I'm trying to pursue... <laughs> are because I'm doing this in other areas. I'm trying to make it so that I am there for me and then I get the things that I can then value from that, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Now, part of it is also just because I stopped, I chose to stop being mad at me. Mm -hmm. Like, I just chose that Yeah. because through a number of different experiences, but me not being mean to me has helped considerably. Yeah. And I talk about that lots too. I value that now yeah. because i've stopped being mean to me <laughs> yeah i didn't value the idea of being nice to myself when i was mean to me mm-hmm. because i didn't have it yeah. you know what i mean and that's a habit too because oh, yeah. you can fall into picking yourself apart all the time and all that shit yep and the guy was going through that a little bit in my head um when we got home from Kelowna, we had a rough week mm-hmm. and this that new position i was in it was easy for me to pick on myself and mm-hmm. it like felt weird for like a few days it was mm-hmm. like oh man like this is it feels like it's raining all the time or something, mm. you know? Yeah. But well, I think it's also tough, like, for when you get a situation like that, that's like a real high. Mm-hmm. Like, you get a week of a real high, and then you're like, I want this all the time. Yeah. I just want this. Yeah. And that means it matters to you, which is good. But then 
you feel the loss. You feel like, oh, I'm a failure because I don't have that all the time. Yeah. I want it's all like these things. Well, it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, man, I'm going to turn this into a positive real quick because I know you got to go. I think it is positive. What are we doing this week to take control and to take a little action? Um, comment, like, subscribe, y'all. Let us know down below. I got to start saying that more often. So comment, like, subscribe. That's what I'm doing this week. What are we doing this week what are we to doing take this some week? action? Yep. Well, I want to get more into music in general. Yeah. So what do you need? Do you need a guitar? Do you need an interface? I think I need... Um. Oh, man, that's a good question. I think I need to figure out what I want to do first. Okay. Like I, I, I want to be able to like mix and stuff. I want to be able to help people produce, right? That kind of deal. Um, but I think I need like a game plan of what I want to start trying to do. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I think like. You need a vision. Yeah. Mike had recommended like, I should just like sit down and like you've, I think recommended this to me as well, where just like put up your camera and talk. I just talk, bro. Yeah. That's a, that's a writing practice too. You just like, uh, you take your journal and you start writing and it'll just be lines and scribbling and then it'll be words that make no sense. And then all of a sudden you're writing a story. Mm -hmm. It's the same kind of idea. So I think, I think I need something like that. Like, and you had re recommended to me when I was doing the drums that I should have set up a camera and done like those things I'm so like sketched about. Yep. And I think maybe doing something in that line would be a good first step yep. somehow just because it's going to suck. Make it for fine. a different reason. Like don't make it about filming and making you cool. Mm -hmm. Be like, Hey man, like what I'm doing, I think is neat. And hopefully someone else can take something away from this. Okay. And if you continue back to the like self-talk thing, if you continue to look at it that way, then it'll be like, how quickly can I get you this next tip? Or how quickly can I get you this next thing that I'm working on? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, like there are days, bro, like my reactions, I have so much fun with it. I don't even go into the edit to see, like I just post it. Cause I'm like, y'all need this like right now. Well, that's why, I, that's why I was always encouraging you to do the reactions. Cause yeah. I find that you being authentic and enjoying is awesome. It's fun. It's just great. Yeah. So for me, I, I was like, that. that's just a vibe that you need to put out there yeah. because you're going to do it anyway. Yeah. You're going to enjoy shit anyway. You're going to yeah. love things. Like when we were talking about that, uh, that latest Drake thing. Yeah. Like I could see how excited you are. I've been like, glued, y'all. I've been glued. Like, I don't understand it at all, but it's dope that you're excited. I, I about barely it. understand it too. And then, yeah. But it's like, it's like, I don't know. I like, that's what we were talking about earlier. Like people enjoying things and being passionate about stuff is like, it just like resonates with us as humans. Yeah. So like, maybe that's it. Maybe we both have to continue into, like for me, it's going to be jumping off point really. Um, but like, we have to act on the passion side. I just think that like, you know, we think about taking time for ourselves, being mindful. Like I was pulling weeds for a long time. I think you got into like baths and meditating and stuff. Oh, I still meditate for sure. Yeah. So if we took time for that to put into our craft, mm. I think that'd be really valuable. Mm. Like I don't want to sit down and practice guitar for two hours a day anymore, but playing a guitar mm. once a day would be great. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? With a little intention and not just like playing until I'm bored, but like actually like work through a few things yep. or like, you know, just work on a mix for 15, 20 minutes a day. Like, Taking the time and like valuing myself enough to take that time, I think would be would do wonders. Mm. Okay, so is that what your uh, target is? Um, my target this week is pretty hefty. What, what time is it? I know you're on a one twenty nine. You got to get going right away, or yep. yeah. Um, I keep seeing that like the new thing is you're supposed to start your own label when you're on, when you're your own band and supposed to put other people on. You're, like there's all these different steps to being like a modern musician. And I see the interest in that, but it's not what I want to do. What I want to do is back to the infrastructure thing. I really want to find a way to promote and support indie artists and creators and producers and everything that falls into that as best as possible. Hmm. Um, and because uh, like I don't think I, I know for a fact that if I lit up a camera tomorrow, I could not duplicate what we did with Freeze the Fall. But God damn it, I could try, hmm. and it won't happen unless I try. So I'm looking at um, intentionally setting time aside to be like, here are some things that I know I have value in and how can I display those in a way that's valuable? So like one of them is I want to try to find people's um, uh, rehearsal spaces, do like kind of comments on them hmm. and uh, just make it fun. Why not? This is what I would do. This is what I think they're doing. This is what I would do. Mm -hmm. Or your home studio or your band practice or your live show or whatever. That's what I want to get into. And I think that I've got a decent enough group around me that if it gets into, like, say, again, in Freeze the Fall, they put out a new music video, hand it off to all the reactors that I know, and everyone has their own kind of stance and they can give a little bit of feedback. 
and they can probably make some really good changes. You know, mm -hmm. if if a band didn't have the resources to hire a videographer or a producer or a studio, then I'd want all that feedback. Can I posit an idea to you? Yeah, of course. Have you ever thought about being a scout? Um, like an AR rep kind of thing? Yes. Like independent of the system of AR rep. Yeah. So like, it's like your ability to spot diamonds, I think is pretty. It's not just me though. It's the community because people. No, of course not. Like we, we, you. we work together in finding these and that's yeah. what I want to promote. Yeah. Like I just want like a place where you're like, Hey, I'm an artist. I think I'm dope. I need help with this, this, yeah, and this. Yeah, Can yeah. you guys check out my stuff? And it'd be yeah. like, yeah, bro. Like we got yeah. you. And just like, you know, be I'm, able to be stoked on things that are popping off. You know? Yeah. Well, and imagine this, like in early fail days before the records, before the recording, before all the stuff, you guys write a song, say you film a band practice and it sounds okay. Mm -hmm. And you put it on YouTube. Now, 60 people found it and said, hey, man, like this is pretty this good. This is pretty good. But then they go, you know, turn off all those backlights behind you and just get right in front so that it's just the singer mm -hmm. and just keep that light on you. You don't have to buy another light, but just the one above you, right? Mm -hmm. You can just unscrew the other ones and then be like, I don't know, go rent a Zoom H4 and put it right about here and record it that way and then put yep. the video up. And then you do that and we all go, oh, hey, you sound way better and you look way better. Mm -hmm. And now we got the next bit of feedback and it becomes a circle. And I think you want to help people. Yeah. And I yeah. think y'all at home, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, subscribe and share. Yeah. Um, they can get in on that too. So like say every Thursday, they know that all their favorite creators are going to be posting and supporting these indie artists. Mm. So all you have to do at home is just go click on a few of them mm -hmm. and see if you vibe with any. And if you yeah, don't, yeah. great. It's like an explore page. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's the street team. It's the NR team. Mm -hmm. Which one, you, which one of these do you want to see next? And if some of them have potential, what do you think? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what would you offer them? Yeah. And it doesn't have to be money. It could be, um, hey, when you're doing your your sing along videos, look at the camera. Mm -hmm. You know, don't look just straight at the wall. Look at the camera. Yeah. And then they do it the next time. The audience goes, like, I engaged way more with it. Like, this is way better. Mm -hmm. And now we have like a little support system going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're big on community, man. Yeah. Just need the infrastructure. I got to work on that. Okay. Well, maybe that's your thing. That's going to be my thing this week. Yeah. 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 And I would challenge you, just try that. Like, Think of the next infrastructure thing, because obviously infrastructure is your thing. But like in the morning, put something there that that's your first thought. Okay. I want to do this today. Okay. Oh, wait, I just want to fucking stay in bed or whatever it is. Yeah. But like the, you know, give yourself one target. Just one target to th think on first thing in the morning. Yeah. Of course, if there's coyotes running around, well, then maybe you can think Both about that. coyotes. Yeah. So what's yours then? Um, and then I'll let you go. Comment, like, subscribe. <laughs> I think... I have to, not have to, I think I'd like to, like talk on something that I'm stoked on. I think, I think I'll need to do that. Yeah, have I ever told you about the deal I make with all my friends for YouTube? No. If you want, if you make yourself a video, you get whatever majority split of yours it is. So if you film a video 100% yourself, I'll give you 100% of the money it makes. If we do something 50-50, I split it 50-50. Hmm. If your brother comes in here, we go 33-33. That's 100% my deal because I'd rather the content than the money. Mm -hmm. To be perfectly honest. So if you find yourself just like even just in thought and film something and you want to put it up, just understand that like the longer you take to get in on that, the higher that bar is going to be of what gets posted mm -hmm. because the channel keeps growing. Right. Um, but if that is something that you're interested in or if you have like a series you want to do and you don't want to like do it on your own, just do it on my channel. Mm. I want the BEL channel to be an umbrella. And eventually I want to get into like where I have individual things, but bright and engaged listening. Like you tell me what that means to you. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think that's like, yeah, allowing, I need to do something to allow myself to express what I'm excited about. You know what I mean? Yeah. You I think that's, that's kind of what's on the tip of my mind. Yep. And I can speak from like personal experience when Kevin gets that thing and you just like sit back and you're like, yes, mm -hmm. that is such a like dope feeling. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially like I don't know what it is, but when you when you celebrate that, it's like a community celebration thing. Like that's uh, what it's I, always felt like. I, I there's no better feeling for me that I know of. Like I'm just it's in a level of excitement that I don't really know how to explain. Yeah, you know I what bet. I mean? Like it's just one of those like I totally bet. It like I feel it in my soul kind of thing. Yeah, but you got to pursue that. You're allowed to feel that. Believe it or not, you're allowed to feel that all the time. Yeah, it's just a strange concept. It's right? like that Bill Murray guy said. He's like, you're a full-time musician. The fuck you doing not writing music all year long? <laughs> well, I definitely ain't full-time anything right now, but in my in the mild if amount of time start, I have. If you don't start, if you don't start. Well, and what I'm describing isn't a lot of time. No, not at all. So, but And what's cool with that is, back to the affirmation thing, it's like we talked on the phone the other day about all the affirmations we've had just from this little show that we've been doing. Oh, yeah, it's wild. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and like I'm very grateful for everything. 
every bit of that. Yeah. Even just being able to spend time with you and yeah. hang out and do things we like to do yeah. and like have people be stoked on the fact that we like to do it is yeah. fun. Oh, bro, if there was four people that were excited about us hanging out in this room together, yeah, yeah. I would still do yeah, it. Exactly. Because it's like it's it's, fun times. it's still fun. And what's interesting is not once in my head do I go th- like am I thinking, oh, I should be doing this or oh, I should be doing that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is like really meditative time for me, too. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Oh, I appreciate it. that, man. Yeah, bro. Anything else before we get out of here? Comment, like, subscribe. Yeah, that one. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> it's going to be a race. That's how we're going to break up our segments, I think. Yeah, comment, like, subscribe. Next and then one. we'll go into the next one. Yeah. yeah that's fair. Okay, y'all. Whatever episode this is, appreciate you. Check us out on Spotify. Ooh, and you can rate us on Spotify. I would appreciate that, too. I would appreciate that, too. Rate us highly, please. Highly. Pretty please. <laughs> Catch y'all on the next one. Peace.